It's a rap, yo. Every copyrighted video is coming down. It won't make money. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Fucking lames. It's a rap, yo. Me, me, because I'm famous, that's all. Police suck dick, that's what the fuck they do. They suck dick, it is what it is, you mean? Um, so, I'm not a criminal, I'm not a criminal, I'm not out there committing, you know what I mean? You know, crimes and shit, I drive my fucking car, I have a car, I drive it. Oh, you wanna pull me over and lock me up? And then do what you do, homie, but I'll be right back out doing the same fucking thing I was doing eight hours ago. So fuck you. Okay, uh, so... How the rap change, uh, the rap game changed the last 10 years? The quality of uh, rap fucking sucks right now. There are some nice rappers, there are some talented rappers out there, but for the most part, make it suck. That's what the fuck it is, man. Take it how you want to fucking take it. So if the cameraman agrees with me, right? That's what it is, man. You take it how you want to take it. Bring it. What? So Eminem released a track which, which is called Rap God. Does he, he's a rap God now? I don't know what Eminem is. I know he's a talented artist. Um, We, we, we have a good relationship, but don't, don't ask me no random shit to start no random beef, all right? Please don't do that. Pop Vet jumped on Instagram Live and gave Nickel Nine his two cents. I bet y'all thought I wasn't gonna reply to Mr. Royce the Five Nine. Wrong. <laughs> Let's unpack this, shall we? I'll let a few people get in the room. You can at him or whatever, tell them to come on in. We just gonna have a discussion. Wrote a few things down. Um, you know, so I might jump around or whatever, but just a few things I wanted to hit. Turn my TV down. Just watched Power. She was good, right? I didn't think Angela was gonna be dead, but um Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> Angela dead. Oh well. You should have been watching it. My bad. So. A uh, a IG just surfaced recently. A couple days ago. A Royce the Five Nine talking about me. What up, Royce? Um, apparently you were a little upset. Again, I thought the video was old. Actually, Dicker hit me up like, "Yo, did you see the shit about Royce?" I thought it was an old video. Uh, but no, it's a new one. Nigga, you didn't think it was an old video. <laughs> it's a new one. What a clown. Uh, although nobody... Is you gonna fucking talk about something or what, man? In videos, people don't really ask me about you, Royce. This nigga's you know, name is Ho Lamar now. Man. Ho but Lamar. Reason, you I can't you stand this fool. He not talking about okay. nothing. I get it. You're, uh, you know, you're a loyal guy. You've been opening up for this guy for years and years and, you know, the hip-hop shop and all that shit you was talking about. Before he dove into the meat of the situation, Jamar called Royce's approach almost passive-aggressive. He pointed out Nickel Nine started his IG video by calling Jamar a legend, which he found rather odd. Now, 
let's just unpack that real quick. Okay, so the reason why people may know or might not know, but the reason why he would call me a legend and my group legendary is because when Brand Nubian came out, which is the group I come from, um, our debut album received five mics in the source. At that time, the source was the hip hop motherfucking Bible. Yeah, but it wasn't too many motherfuckers that they was um that they was uh 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 fucking criticizing this shit. Um, cause back then it was it wasn't a lot of motherfuckers, man. It wasn't. So for y'all to get five mics wasn't fucking hard. And to get five mics was like. Yeah, you know, not many people have done it at that at that time. That's right. Um, That's what I just said. Later on, it wasn't hard for you to get them. The publication went down. They started giving them mics away. But at that time, getting five mics in the source was some shit. Also, when we came out, you know, our shit was everywhere. Like the hood was fucking with us. The suburbs was fucking with us. From the jails to the college dorms, black people, white people, like everybody. Honestly, it's because y'all was the only big group at the time. Like we had Run DMC, three man group. We had like Beastie Boys, another three four man group. Uh, it wasn't no big groups, man. So like when y'all came out, and, and beyond that, beyond that, um, Grand Pooba was the fucking man. Like, uh, I don't understand what you're talking about, man. You think, like, you was the man in that group? I don't know. But, yeah, the suburbs was fucking with y'all. Because y'all had some dope shit at that time. At that time. All right? So, the hood was fucking with you. The suburbs was fucking with you. They wasn't fucking with you in jails. Because at that time, like, not many jails was, like, letting motherfuckers have tape players and shit like that. Like, that wasn't, like, the norm in jails. I mean, if you was in, a, like, a fucking minimum, and, and you was in a dorm, you could probably get a fucking walk, man. But if you was in fucking prison, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, you could get walk, man, and shit. But honestly, man, y'all shit wasn't bumping like that. Like, because the first time I got locked up, man, was in 98, man. And, uh, they wasn't bumping no fucking Nubian in, uh, in the jail in 98. You know, it, it they just wasn't, man. They just wasn't. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I think Nubian was about dead by by that point, honestly. But when I was growing up in, in the '80s and all that, and, and in the early '90s, y'all name came up. You know, sometimes like it wasn't like something everybody talked about all the time. They was talking about Jason Mizell and Run DMC. You know, uh, they was talking about uh, NWA and uh, groups that was coming coming out right then, Wu Tang and um, you know what I'm saying? And, and like, y'all wasn't y'all wasn't even being talked about, man, because you know I grew up in the fucking hood, and uh, you know the only time I really ever heard y'all name is like. When I was in school, and it was like the high schoolers, like the older kids, man, that that came from like the late seventies, and yeah, they would have y'all in the boombox and shit. That's the type of shit they liked. But like us, like 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 the eighties kids and the nineties kids, wasn't fucking with Grand Nubian, man. Wasn't y'all wasn't slapping. Y'all wasn't making bangers. Y'all wasn't making hits. There wasn't nothing on the radio. You know what I'm saying? But when motherfucking M came out, it was all hype. Everybody talking about M. Everybody. The jails. Everybody. All the tape players in the jail was fucking bumping Eminem, man. They was bumping Eminem. Fuck, man. His first album that didn't even get published, Infinite, Infinity, is better than anything... Brand Nubian came out with, bro. And I fucked with Nubian a little bit once I found out who they was in the late 90s. 
Uh, but that was late, man. Like, I was late getting to y'all. And that was only because an old head put me on to y'all and handed me a CD. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't, uh, it wasn't people like, yo, oh, you gotta hear the new brand newbie and drop. No. <laughs> no. And I'd never, ever heard your name involved with anything from Brand Nubian. You had like a cool verse. What the fuck was that song, man? I forget the names of the songs, man. But you had like a cool verse on one song. And, and you actually said you was the king and shit. Like, man, shit. Shit. You was the corniest dude in the group, bruh. The corniest dude in the group. So, honestly, man. Like, yeah, nobody was talking about y'all. I don't know what you fuck talking about. And when M came out, everybody was talking about M. And I'm from the hood. And all my black friends was bumping M. And all my black friends was like, yo, M is up there with Pac and Big. For real, this dude is a fucking lyricist. And I was like, yo, y'all ain't fucking lying. I'm listening. You know what I'm saying? Shit. And everything Shady was dropping, every song was different, you know? You know, until later on, you know what I'm saying? Later on in the albums, and you know, when my man was in a, a state, but his shit was still bumping, still slapping. Man, I bought Revival. I bought all M's albums, bro. I bought them all, bro. A old head handed me your CD, bro. We wasn't buying brand Nubian. You fucking kidding me? Man. I don't know, man. Let's hear what the rest of this fucking retard has to say. Nobody was fucking with Brand Nubian when that shit came out. Nobody was. And it was a legendary time. This was a time when people would go buy your tape and you knew who had... Yeah, at this time, motherfuckers was buying shit. They was buying shit. Y'all wasn't the top selling motherfuckers, man. Had the most popping album because niggas is riding around the street and all you hear is basically one album. Or or, or, or or certain albums that was popping at that time. And our album was one of the main joints with you in Harlem, Brooklyn, whatever the fuck you was at, they was playing our fucking shit. Our run was legendary. <laughs> like like corn in corn corn was legendary. Corn corn We made corn self having knowledge of self cool kind of palatable. No, y'all didn't do that. Y'all did not fucking do that, man. Y'all did not do that. Oh, my God, man. Oh, man. Corn. 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 I mean, people came before us that had knowledge of self. Rock Kim made it super cool. And, and, and you know... Uh, yeah. King Son and see, there's a whole bunch of big. See, he's gonna talk about who came before him and who did it before them and made it cool before them. So it was already cool, bro. He didn't make anything cool. It was already fucking cool. Power of Self was already cool. Knowledge of Self was already cool. Like you didn't really. I mean, yeah, yeah. You were talking about it, talking about it. Um, but like, you didn't have an impact, bro. Didn't have an impact because nobody fucking remembers it. Daddy came, you know what I mean? But but when we came with it, I don't know. We went just a little deeper and just made it a little more no, you didn't. palatable. No, you for didn't. Some people, you know. Oh, for certain and people. A lot of people end up getting knowledge. Oh, so. like he said, for certain people. But when you talk about M, you're gonna say black folks don't listen to M. But now you're saying, like, your music furthered this fucking... <laughs> for certain people. You're, you're, you're... But you were all in the suburbs and all in the hood and all in the jails and all, you know... I don't, I don't understand you, bruh through fucking with our music. That's part of what made and what makes Brand Nubian so legendary and why uh, Dude would even start out, you know, his whole rant. Um, Wasn't even a that. fucking rant. And say that. 
you know. So thank you and respect for acknowledging me, you know, and acknowledging what has been done, what I've done in this game. No, 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 no. No, he did not. He did not acknowledge you at all, motherfucker. He pretty much told you you're a fucking corn. Nobody knows who you are. He never knew your fucking name. He didn't even know you were part of that band. So, no. He wasn't talking about the things you did. Because he didn't even know who the fuck you were. Thank you. I appreciate that. In part two, Jamar is just a... Alright. Alright. Uh, not going to go any more into this whole Lamar shit. But, uh... I should actually add the Royce interview to this. I think I'm going to. Matter of fact. Alright. So we're going to check out what fucking Royce had to say. And we'll compare it to what Ho Lamar just said. You know, like, I think if people knew how much money he made off of that shit, man, they probably would look at it different. Like, especially Lord Jamar, you know, like, you're a legend in the game, you're part of a legendary rap group. It's like you're going and sitting on this man's couch, sitting in this man's chair, and, you know, like, you're running up these views because you got so much controversial shit to say about one fucking person. Exactly. That's the only reason that he's doing it. It's the only reason he continues to do it. And honestly, I feel like, honestly, I feel like motherfucker has, has a, has a thing for him. Is M is always on the motherfucker's mind. And, you know, he walks away with the check and you walk away, you know, um, craving attention. You <laughs> know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, I don't even like seeing niggas in that space. I don't like seeing you in that I say that shit all the time. I say that shit all the time. I hate seeing, even, even my people that I don't fuck with, man. I hate seeing you in a negative fucking state, man. I hate seeing you constantly trying to dog out somebody. Like, like you got nothing going on with your life good that, like, it makes you feel good to fucking sit there and dog out somebody that you don't really know about, that you don't really understand. You know what I'm saying? You don't understand his fans. You don't understand him, obviously. Royce is right, hey, brother. You know what I mean? Because like talking about him, like real niggas don't listen to his music and all that. First of all, man, you're not like the measuring stick of who's <laughs> real or who's cool. You know? I like that shit because I said that at the beginning of this whole fucking beef, man. Who the fuck is Lord Jamar to be uh telling who the fuck is real real motherfuckers, man? Cause honestly, I don't think he's a real motherfucker. He ain't never done nothing. I'm gonna react to this new song he's got out too. Whack. We're talking about uh power of self and you know, knowledge of self and shit like that. But this new song is all about cocaine. It's all about cocaine and prostitutes. I'm saying, like, I don't know what you think about us over here or you think about me. I understand you said some shit like, yeah, you respect 50, but, but the other niggas know who I don't respect, or whatever the fuck that was, you said, like, yo, I don't care about none of that shit. You don't have to respect me, just don't disrespect me. I don't want no problems with nobody, and I don't have to fuck nobody up. You know what I'm saying? That's how I... See that? He didn't just automatically say, like, yo, I'm gonna fuck you up for fucking with my man. He's like, I don't even want no problems with nobody, and I don't have to fuck nobody up. But you bring a problem to me... Obviously, we am gonna handle it. Cause guess what? Royce is a real motherfucker. So was I. Look at it. You're not cool to me. You're not tough to me. You're not the measuring stick of what street niggas look at you. Absolutely not. I don't look at you like no type of street nigga. Nope. I look at you the same way you look at Marshall. You say he talk about a bunch of shit he don't do. I feel like you rapped about a bunch of shit you never did and you still ain't doing. So what's what's fucking facts, man? Fucking facts, cause <laughs> <laughs> fucking love this dude. It's really the difference. 
You know what I'm saying? And and nobody's farting nobody for having their opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like you can have your opinion. And how I feel about Griselda, nobody can say nothing bad to me about Griselda. Those are my niggas. So if I go on your show and I do an interview with you and I know that you don't fuck with Griselda, I'm not seeing your side. You don't have a side in my book. And you know, y'all keep fucking bringing my name up on the show. Like, you know, Royce would never say, come on the show and say anything bad about Marshall. You got damn right. I wouldn't come on your show and say anything bad about any of my friends. I don't have an obsession with Marshall as just an isolated friend. I treat all my friends the same way. I don't speak bad on my friends. I don't, I don't play, I don't have sides. It's our side. It's our side and you don't have a side. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that's how I feel about that situation. And I really think if we came to a place where we can be a little bit more unified, if not even just in this country, because the, the value that we bring to this country is ridiculous. I think if we realize that and we could take that value either somewhere else or just stand with each other in solidarity just long enough to where, you know, we can get I have a back a bit, we need to move us if we came to a place where we can be a little bit more unified, if not even just in this country, because the, the value that we bring to this country is ridiculous. I think if we realize that and we could take that value either somewhere else or just stand with each other in solidarity just long enough to where, you know, we can get whatever it is that we need to move us forward as a people. Like, it's time to start thinking about the next generation. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's coming into this game without the information. You know, the shit that y'all worried about is not important. Like, the top 50 lists and the top 20, all of these lists and shit. Like, yo, man, like, it's cool if you put me on a list. And it's cool if you don't put me on a list. You know, you're entitled to your opinion. Like, in my mind, you don't really qualify to validate me. You know, like, I feel like as an artist, you have to, like, guard that and protect that and not let so many people be in control of that, of you in that way. You know what I mean? So it's just like, we, I just look at all this shit and then I look When are you guys like, going to mommy? It's like, bro, how long are y'all going to talk about this shit? Like, why don't y'all just find something else to talk about? It's not an issue over here yeah. in our book. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, we respect what you do. Yeah. Like, I, he stood for in the culture or whatever it is that he did or whatever it is that he got going on. I wish you nothing but the best, bro. But your opinion don't mean nothing. I like how he said that, like, he said, whatever you're doing and whatever, I wish you nothing but the best. Got nothing, I don't wish, um, nothing bad on nobody. It don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you cannot lie. But your opinion doesn't mean a damn thing. It's like my opinion doesn't mean a motherfucking thing. Royce's opinion doesn't mean a motherfucking thing. Everybody got an opinion. It don't mean jack shit. It don't mean jack shit. Only to you. Um, and some people that agree with you. You know, so... Let's not try to push our opinion like it's a fucking fact. Like, hold, hold Lamar. Fucking... Like, it's a fact that nobody fucks with them. How in the fuck does this man sell the most fucking shit in the world, but nobody fucks with him? There isn't that many white people in the world, bro. Some black folks had to buy his shit. Yeah, they had to. Or else he wouldn't be the most fucking selling artist in the fucking world, bro. Come on, Hola Mar. You got a brain, man. Even if it's the size of a fucking walnut, you know how to use the motherfucker. You can put words together and make a song, right? Like shit from here to across the street. We don't fucking care. Neither does anybody else, bro. I hate to I hate to put it to you like that, man, because I don't mean no disrespect, but you really, really, really have a false sense of what's really going out here and going on out here in the world. Like you really That's a think fact. you can speak for like real street niggas and real cool niggas. You're not cool. What have you done cool? Nothing. Nothing, because like nobody like knows like him. Or Look, nobody knows him. If he did anything, if he did anything ever, iconic, 
or legendary, like he says, people would know who the fuck he is. Nobody knows who he is. The only reason people know who Ho Lamar is is because he started speaking about M and went on DJ Vlad. That's the only reason people know about him. And the only reason people like me know about him is because we're true hip-hop heads from the 80s and the 90s. And we know that he didn't do a motherfucking thing. And we know that real motherfuckers wasn't fucking with him because it wasn't all up in the jails and it wasn't all up in the suburbs and it definitely wasn't all up in the hood. Like I said, in the 90s, an old head gave me a brand Nubian album. And you know what I mean? Gave it to me. I wouldn't buy that shit if you, if I had the money. If I had a million dollars, I wouldn't go out and buy brand Nubian, bro. I wouldn't, man. If I was rich, I would not buy. I, I would not. If I had money, I would not buy your fucking albums. I wouldn't, man. I wouldn't. Yo. Did nothing cool ever. Nobody knows you, so you did nothing cool. And that you have directly invested your time and energy in, and I'll, I'll, I'll donate to that motherfucker tomorrow. Just please, man, like, please point out something, something, something that you've done. Please, please tell me one line that you have said in your career that, that qualifies you to critique a top-tier lyricist. I don't give a fuck if you don't like his music. The motherfucker is in everybody's top five. You don't get there by just being a white rapper. And I know it's like, oh, there you go defending them again. There you go again. God damn, I'm defending lyricists. It's a small community of motherfuckers that went to the hip-hop shop before we got on. And we went to clubs like the Ebony Showcase and we was the backpack niggas. We was the hip-hop niggas. All of us, we listen to M's album. Everybody in the hood is listening to M's album that's M's That's a lyrics. fact. Everybody I knew every bought nigga, every, every, the every, album. Every, every real nigga ain't street and every street nigga ain't real. What that's I a thought? fact. Every street nigga ain't real. That's a Every fact. nigga in the hood ain't a street nigga that only want to listen to Jeezy. You know what I'm saying? And every nigga that sit his broke ass on on DJ Vlad couch don't qualify to speak for all real niggas. Y'all niggas ain't fucking cool, man. Y'all goofy as fuck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I just don't I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand when y'all became the measuring stick. But yo, and that's where we can stop this. Like you said, I don't understand when y'all became the measuring stick. Y'all do not qualify to speak on real motherfuckers. You do not qualify to speak on everybody in the suburbs. You do not qualify to speak on everybody in the jails. Ho Lamar, have you ever been to jail? Have you? Yeah. Bro, like I said, an old head gave me your album. Nobody was rocking that shit. I didn't know who you were, who Brand Nubian was until the old head gave me the album. And we played it like twice, you know. My homies wasn't feeling it, so I wasn't pump. I wasn't bumping it. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't feeling it either. It was trash. Nah, it wasn't trash, cause you all got five mics, so it wasn't trash. But for me, it wasn't dope. Like nobody was talking about that album. Nobody was talking about Brand Newbie, and nobody, not a mother fucking soul. Nobody in jail was going, yo, man, did you hear the new brand, Nubian? Nobody. Nobody. Nobody on my blocks was like, yo, Bob, yo, you got to cop that new brand, Nubian. That shit is fire, dog. Nope. Nope. But when M dropped his shit, everybody, even my black friends, yo, Bob, you cop that album yet? Yo, I'm trying to hear that shit. Come on, man. Everybody in the hood was talking about M. Everybody. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna end this shit. I just wanted to bag on Ho Lamar. Well, I'm gonna react to that, um. What the fuck is it called? The Corner? I think it's called The Corner or something like that. I'm gonna react to that shit. So, yo, fam, thanks for rocking with me. Thanks for checking out this commentary. I know it was a little goofy. I just wanted to compare these two, what they were saying. You know? So, it's a wrap, yo. It's a rap, yo. Peace. Every copyrighted video is coming down. You won't make one now. Fuck you. Fuck you, man.
fucking lames. It's a wrap, yo. <laughs>